There is a power which, if it ever manifested in the hands of some potential tyrant, could lead us all to doom because he could rule the world if ever he got hold of this tremendous potential power. And even as I speak, military boffins around the world are laboring long into the night to try to perfect this power and to perhaps put it into the hands of such a potential tyrant. So we should watch out. And many is the sci-fi writer or fantasist who has put this into a story or uh, speculated about what possible worlds could exist in a world which has this power and that power is invisibility. And it's such a powerful power, such an interesting power, and such an, an oft-talked-about power that I think it deserves talking about in a video such as this. But I do concede that there are uh, two really major problems with the power of invisibility. The first of these is well, how's that going to work then? I mean, how can you make someone invisible? Oh yeah, the invisible man, yeah, right. As though you could make a body, a living thing with, with muscles and skin and the rest of it d d transparent. That's just, that's just ridiculous. It's too far-fetched. There's no point in talking about it. Uh, well, is it though? I mean, how are you able to see me now? Are you not looking at me using eyes? Uh, are photons of light not going through the transparent corneas on, on the front of your eyes? Are they then not focused by the living, moving, muscular, pulsating lens that is behind that? And then the aqueous and vitreous humours behind that before uh, eventually hitting the retina? Yes! Bits of you are both living and moving and yet transparent. Or are you going to tell me that your, your muscular moving lens is either not transparent or not living? Ha! You can't, can you? And are there not jellyfish that are pretty damn transparent and, and even shrimp with exoskeletons and fish with endoskeletons? Okay, they're not completely transparent, but they're mostly transparent. I mean, granted, if you try to make a person transparent, uh, I do wonder how do you do hair, for instance? I mean, even if you, you drank some potion that, that infused around your body and interacted with all the cells of your body, turning them somehow transparent, it wouldn't go in, get into your hair, would it? There's, there's no root by which that potion could get into your hair, which is dead. So, yeah, maybe you don't have to be just naked to be completely uh, invisible. Maybe you'll have to ha be hairless as well. You'd have to shave all over, and that's something to think about. Um, uh, and teeth, they're sort of semi-living, aren't they? And what about the contents of your stomach, you know, the, the supper that you just ate a few minutes ago? Yeah, all right, there are, there are problems. I grant you that there are problems, but it's not absolutely, totally unfeasible that any kind of invisibility could ever exist. Think of what science has brought us today. I mean, you know, this camera that, that's, that's videoing me now would have been completely unthinkable a hundred years ago. So, yes. Yes, maybe it is worth speculating upon because it's, it's a power that could possibly exist, but then we run into the second problem, which is, well, it's a bit world-breaking, isn't it? Uh, for the story writer, uh, for instance, uh, if he's got a world in which uh, invisibility does exist, then if it's a fantasy novel, for instance, the king can never be sure when he's discussing his plans to invade the next kingdom that his plans are not being overheard by someone who's in the room even now. And every time he... Well, his every waking moment, in fact, he's going to be terrified that there might be invisible assassins out to get him. And how does he defend himself against them? Well, yeah, it's a bit... It is potentially a bit world-breaking, but perhaps if I discuss all the ways in which someone might perhaps become invisible and all the, the pros and cons of that, it might not be quite so world-breaking. It, it might be, see, downpowered a bit until it becomes a little bit more, more useful in a story. Now, typically an author likes invisibility uh, because his hero with a thousand faces character, his, his Luke Skywalker type, who, who starts just as an you know, ordinary farm boy and ends up killing the dragon or whatever it is, um, he can use invisibility uh, and that explains how he's able to pull off this amazing feat. Um, yes, he's got the incredible sandals of invisibility. Yeah, why not sandals? Why does it always have to be a hat or a ring or a cloak or something? Sandals? Oh no, wait a minute. No, <laughs> all right. <coughs> I take that back. Don't have sandals uh, uh, given the power of imbuing the wearer with invisibility because, if you think about it, um, one thing Invisible Man generally does do traditionally is leave footprints. Uh, and so if you had sandals, there would be specific sandals. And so someone was, hey, I know those, those, those are the sandals of invisibility. Ah, oh, it was the invisible, invisible man. That's, that's how they did it. Yeah, yeah, they'd be able to recognize you by the... Okay, so, all right, nothing that touches the ground, okay? But a cummerbund of invisibility, perfectly good. Okay, so, so he gets the cummerbund of invisibility, and that's how he's able to pull off the feet. So it's a storytelling... Uh, device that gives it gives a uh, an, an explanation for it makes it feasible that this farm boy could do the amazing thing he had the the, the cummerbund invisibility um, but 
The trouble is that if one person can use it, then other people can have it used on him. And it doesn't really, it doesn't really work very well the other way. If um, one of the heroes is just suddenly killed uh, by someone, oh, he was invisible, so there's nothing he could do about it. Oh, so now even the really powerful, amazing characters can just be killed any moment by a guy who's invisible. Can you imagine that in a, in a role-playing game? Uh, okay, I'll go and scout ahead, and you look round, you look down the corridor, and uh, the, the, the games master rolls a few dice and says, uh, take 22 hit points damage to the head. What? 22 hit points? That, that'll kill me! Yeah, well... Uh, well, what killed me? Ah, uh, you didn't see it. Just, you just saw, everyone else, you just see him slumped down dead. And ah, there's nothing he could have done to defend himself against that because there was an invisible guy who just came up to him and just went bonk on the head. And well, where's the fun in that? So uh, the player characters are never going to enjoy having invisibility used against them uh, when it's unfair like that. But they're perfectly happy when they've got the cummerbund of invisibility to do all sorts of nasty things to their enemies. Oh yeah, that's fine. And it doesn't work two-way dramatically very well. It's almost always something given to the hero to achieve his heroic aims. Uh, but once you put invisibility into the world, you know, it, it could turn around and bite you. So you've got to think of that. Um, now, uh, a lot of people became first aware of uh, the idea of invisibility through the science fiction stories of H.G. Wells, who wrote The Invisible Man, which I I remember reading when I was about 11. No, I was. I was 11. I read it one weekend. And in that, the main character, who's called Griffin, um, is a man who studies optics and he's able to make his body somehow the same refractive index as air, so he becomes invisible. Though, of course, um, only his body. So you take in the chemicals, so you imagine the chemicals are only going to affect your body, so that's not going to make uh, your clothes disappear or any equipment that you want to carry with you, so you've got to be completely naked. So there's one very quick way to downpower the utility of invisibility. You've got to be completely naked. Um, and so you can't take the tool. So if you needed that spanner to do the thing, uh, you, you, you manage to get past all the guards, you get to the thing, you can't turn the nut because you haven't got the spanner. Uh, I mean, one possibility, I suppose, is you could you could make a spanner out of bone and you could swallow it and then take the potion. And if, if the potion is able to affect uh, the food that you ate that's, that's in your stomach, uh, then it could, and it could affect bone, which is in your skeleton, then maybe uh, the, the spanner goes invisible in you and then you, you go through and then you <laughs> regurgitate the spanner and then that's one way around it. Um, although I suppose if the chemical can affect the bone directly, why not just put it in a tray and pour the chemicals over the, the bone? Uh, span and that would save the whole uh, yeah do it that way don't have to regurgitate anything although regurgitation is dramatic you might think or just maybe you just think it's disgusting anyway um so um the, the so the so, so there's nakedness um and you can imagine that uh what happens to uh, Griffin, actually, is he goes mad. So Griffin, in the story An Invisible Man by H.G. Wells, he goes understandably mad. Now, you might say that if you were actually invisible, permanently invisible as he was, uh, that might uh, send you mad in the long run indirectly. But I think it's actually more implied that the chemicals that he's putting into himself or had put, in, put into himself, uh, they affected every cell of his body, making him invisible, even his hair. Um, and uh, so that would affect his brain. And so going mad is quite easy to believe. You can imagine quite a few other side effects. Uh, for instance, maybe, yeah, you go invisible, but, oh boy, are you, uh, is it carcinogenic? You probably get cancer. And if you're the first person ever to take the potion, um, you might not know that. But if invisibility exists in the world, and after a while, you'd imagine people would start noticing. Have you noticed that people who take invisibility potions, they all seem to die of cancer a few years later? Um, or maybe it's, yeah, it's a really one-way trip. You go invisible and, yeah, you're invisible. You get to do the thing, but it's what you are going to die. It's horrendously poisonous and uh, it will kill you. Um, so that's sort of one really powerful way of downpowering invisibility. Yes, you can, you can use this great power, but it's a hell of a sacrifice. But you might say, ah, oh, no, that still doesn't work because there are fanatics. Fanatics are a thing. And if there's a world with fanatics in who might want to kill the king, who they believe is the, 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 the antichrist, well, not the anti, the anti, anti, God, anti-prophet, um, <coughs> then um, it's not going to stop them, is it? If they're willing to sacrifice their lives, they will go, okay, this potion will kill me, but never mind. Boom. Right, here we go, I'll, I'll kill the king. Um, so it's still potentially world-breaking if you have that sort of fanatic, uh, though it's perfectly possible, I suppose, to create a world in which that level of fanaticism just doesn't exist, just isn't in the culture, so nobody really worries about it. Um, anyway, so how is it, uh, is it achieved? I've talked about... Um, the biological uh, way of the, the cells might go transparent and, and potions and so forth. But obviously, the, the science fiction, there might be some sort of ray that, that they zap you with or a 
a suit that you wear. There are other ways of going invisible. Uh, Griffin studied, as I say, optics. Um, but uh, if you were invisible, a major thing is, can you see yourself? When you look down at yourself, do, do you see yourself? If you don't, if you are completely invisible even to yourself, then <clears throat> you look down and you, you expect to see your body and your feet, but you don't. So you sort of keep looking down, whoa, you tumble forwards and, whoa, where, where am I? Oh, ah, yeah, I'm invisible. Okay, oh, it's working. And um, where's my hand? Oh, right, yeah, there's my hand. Oh, um, you, you expect it to come into vision. It doesn't. So you keep moving it towards you, thinking, well, it's going to come into my vision now, surely, surely. And it doesn't until you, oh, you hit yourself in the head and, oh, oh, this is freaky. Okay, you haven't really got, you'd have to almost learn to walk again. Or you might have to think to yourself, okay, okay, I don't have to look at my feet to walk normally. I've just got to not think about it. Okay, here we go. But you might find yourself walking really, really carefully at first because this is a bit freaky. And just think how clumsy you might get if you want to um, pick up that thing that's on the table. You can't see your hands, so where exactly is it? Is it, it, it oh, I've knocked it over. Uh, <clears throat> okay, or, or maybe uh, that you're at the conference and you have to get the, the secret note that someone has passed to the ambassador and you're just about to get it. And someone who can't see you, so they didn't know that they were getting in the way, they suddenly whoop, they, they, they sit there and they pull the chair out and you have to whoop, leap back to make sure that the, they didn't feel you. And okay, right. And then again, you have to reach over the ambassador's shoulder. Now, the shoulder's about there, so you think your hand is there, but what if your hand is actually there? You might touch the shoulder, and, and then they'd know. Okay, all right, um, all right, so in order to make sure it's definitely not there, I'm going to put it there, okay? And now, uh, I can't reach the note. I can't reach... Um, uh, uh, this could be really awkward and difficult. If you can't see yourself, you can't see what you're doing, and you'd be very, very uncertain about what you can get away with. And so, yes, that would be a, a, actually a major drawback, not being able to see yourself. Um, but there's another uh, drawback. If you are invisible because you're completely transparent, you're completely transparent. That means photons of light traveling through the air would just go all the way through you. So, whereas normally uh, one uh, hits the retina of your eye and then stops, interacts with that retina, the brain detects it, that then becomes one tiny bit of information uh, in the picture that it's built up. You can see! But if photons just go straight through your retina and keep on going, they're not absorbed because your retina is completely transparent, and this is something actually that H.G. Wells did think about. He had uh, the invisible man's retinas very, very dimly visible. But that still wouldn't have worked, by the way, because if you think about it, you need the whole eyeball for an eye to work, because the outside, the white of an eye, is very opaque, and that cuts out all the light apart from the light coming through the pupil at the front. Uh, and that's what you want, because if the retina can take in light from all the angles, because there's no white of the eye to stop uh, that happening, then you, you just get a completely fuzzy picture. And you'd be able to tell the difference between a, being in broad daylight and in a dark room. So light and dark you'd be able to tell apart, but that's about it. There'd be no, no focused picture. So you would be pretty much blind, and if you had completely transparent retinas, you would be completely blind, which is sort of fair. So that's one way to downpower um, uh, the, the power of invisibility quite a lot. Uh, yeah, they can't see you, but you can't see them. That's fair. Um, but then you might think, oh, yeah, okay, but if that's the case, then if you wanted to uh, recruit someone to go on a spying mission, you'd recruit blind people because they are already used to navigating in a world in which they cannot see. Uh, and then perhaps that would in turn lead to people becoming very suspicious of a blind, a blind person because you see a blind person, who could be a spy, could be a spy, could be an invisible trained ninja agent. Um, then I suppose you could have some sort of high-tech school where they do nasty experiments on small children, making them blind at a young age, and then they, they raise them in order to be uh, invisible assassins. And you, you can take this too far, obviously. I'm, and, yeah, I'm going off on, on a wild limb here. I better reel it in. But you, you get the idea. So um, people who are blind would be better at being invisible than people who are not blind. Uh, and people who are not blind normally would find it really super disorienting. Um, so could you imagine trying to, yes, you can, you can hear, perhaps. Say, let's say your, your ears still work, but how are you going to get into position to eavesdrop on the king? Where are you going to put yourself in the room? Because you can't see the room. So you're, you, you think, well, well, no one else seems to be standing here. This is good. This is a good place to be. Okay, I'll be here. What you don't know is that the reason no one else is standing there is it's right in front of the door and they didn't want to block the door. So the next time someone comes through the door, yeah, 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 you, you were ahead of me. Okay, so uh, yes, that would be very, very difficult. Uh, being blind and invisible. Um, 
But, or maybe you can turn yourself completely invisible apart from your eyes, or maybe just one eye. So then you're not really completely invisible, but at least you can see a bit. But now you know, an eyeball making its way across the room is very likely to be seen. And, and a lot of people would remark on it, I think. I, I, I certainly would. I'm going to cough now. I'm sorry. <coughs> anyway. Um, but I talked about um, being of the same refractive index as air, so that you can't be seen. But if that air had something like smoke, or rain, or a blizzard, or fog, or a huge amount of dust, then, then you'd be visible. And yet a lot of writers have come up with this, and so they then end up with a very contrived story. So for some reason, at the critical moment, the invisible guy has to go through a dust cloud or fog or something, and that's how he ends up getting seen. And it's so contrived. Fog, fog is not that common, yet not even in Britain. Actually, I don't, I don't think I have to say this to young Americans anymore. I think uh, young Americans now know that Britain is not actually perpetually foggy. But old Americans, um, and, and please believe me, young Americans, this actually definitely used to be true. Old Americans really did think that Britain was most of the time foggy. And this is because of uh, cheap B-movies of the 30s, 40s, and 50s, in which if you wanted to have uh, set something in London, oh, how do you do that? It's a lot of, lot of expense flying everyone over. Ah, I know, we'll just get some iron railings, uh, a cardboard cutout that looks a bit like Big Ben, a bong sound effect, uh, a lamppost on a fog machine, London, done. And so they got the impression that uh, for some reason, Britain was perpetually foggy, which it isn't. Anyway, uh, I don't like this um, idea where you have to contrive the invisible man having to go through fog and the like, but I do quite like the idea of people deliberately creating these things in order uh, to, to, to effect a countermeasure against the invisible man. There's an invisible man in the room, possibly. Oh, quick, I know what to do. And one rushes off and, and, and goes to the pantry and gets a big bag of flour and he comes piling into the room and throws it as hard as he can against the ceiling and the, the, the bag bursts and flour goes all over the room. And his, his mate, he had a different idea. He went out to, into the garden, brought in the garden hose and he's spraying the water all the way around the room. They're going to find this invisible man. They're going to find him. They're going to find him. And then I think we have the sequence ends with, uh, with a, a static shot of them looking around them as, as the, the hose just drip, drip, drips, and they realize that they've covered their front room in flour and water and, well, it could have been worse, I suppose. It could have been paint. Um, but uh, I, I quite like the humor of, of, of that moment and, and the fact that you're forcing the countermeasure on, on, onto a character. So he had to actively do something rather than just, oh, I saw him because it was foggy, which I think is a bit of a get out. I'm sorry, I, I think it's, it's a cop out. It's a cop out is what I meant to say. Um, uh, yeah, so they just ruined their furniture. Uh, although, if you imagine that if you had a transparent body, it might not have the refractive index of air. In fact, given that the body is mostly water, it's not uh, unreasonable to imagine that it might have a refractive index close to that of water, in which case, in air, your body would look like a big lens. I mean, the various bits of your body, your arm, your torso, and so forth, they're roughly round in cross-section, so uh, each bit of you would act a bit like a magnifying glass. Although, of course, if you did have the refractive index of air, you would also, by the same reason, be, inv be visible underwater. Anyway, um, and that shows another utility of, of, uh, of invisibility. So if you've, you're on an island somewhere and you need to light a fire, you've got a round pebble, you zap it with your, your inviso ray because you're high tech, it then goes transparent and you've now got a, a, a very powerful magnifying glass and perhaps you can light a fire with it. Uh, or maybe you have to, another survival situation, you have to cross the burning desert and the sun is beating down on you and scorching you. What do you do? Ah, cast invisibility on yourself and now the sun rays pass straight through you and you're much cooler and you're fine. And, oh, and if you had to in, uh, rescue someone from a burning building, uh, that would, you, again, cast invisibility on yourself and, uh, and then the radiant heat won't affect you nearly so much. I mean, I'm not saying that you're safe or anything, but you, the radiant heat of the fire at least wouldn't affect you nearly so much. Uh, or, or perhaps the people who are in more danger are the people actually in the building, uh, so maybe you should cast it on them, zap it with your, your high-tech thing or use your magic spell or whatever, and they uh, then are less affected by the radiant heat. Uh, although, yeah, it does occur to me there's a drawback to that, is that there you go in, you're incredibly heroic, and you come out like that, carrying the invisible body of the, of the person you've rescued, and uh, you'll get no credit for it because everyone would just say, oh, would you, anyone could just walk around like that and say, oh yeah, I rescued an invisible person from the burning building. 
but they didn't rescue anyone at all. Invisible person, my foot. So you can see that you wouldn't get so many hero points. Uh, hey, but they wouldn't be so affected by the radiant heat. So there we go, another potential use for, for being transparent in an emergency. Um, but uh, if your body were acting like a lens, you wouldn't really be invisible. Uh, you've probably seen the film Predator, where when the predator moves, it's immediately uh, clear what, what, what it is. It's interesting, isn't it, that when, um, we, when something is still and very, very difficult to see, uh, we may not recognize it as, as human, but as soon as a human shape moves in a human way, or in the case of the predator, a humanoid thing, uh, immediately we may, our, our minds make sense of it because we're so tuned in to what a human body looks like and how a human body moves, that the instant that such a body moves, oh yeah, that's a person. And you can see which way they're facing and, and what they're doing. And you can get a huge amount of information out of, out of a, a tiny amount of visual cue. So as soon as the predator in Predator uh, that looks a bit transparent moves, immediately we can see it. So if you were uh, transparent but the refractive, re refractive index of water, then <clears throat> you would uh, probably have to stay very still not to be noticed. Uh, though possibly your, the, the surface of your body might not be shiny in the way water is, so you, you might not have the glints on you, but you'd still have that distorting effect. Um, and uh, another way, another way of being invisible would be actually to be air. That's why you can't be seen. You disappear into th thin air because you become thin air. So you, you drink the potion, say, let's make it a magic potion. Uh, well, it doesn't have to be magic, does it? It could be some, some science potion that um, causes your body to turn into so much gas. Your clothes go whoop in a pile on the floor and you whoosh, you are now the air in the room, and that's why they can't see you. They come in looking for you. Where is he? What's it? A bit of a strange smell in here, isn't it? Where is he? I don't, I don't understand where he just disappeared into thin air. This is just too weird. And then, after they've gone, well, what could you do? Your gas. Um, would you be aware that you're gas? I mean, if your brain has dispersed in the form of gas, then presumably it no longer functions as a brain, in which case you are not conscious. You don't have muscles anymore. You wouldn't be able to control which direction you move in. Um, you would be, yes, just going with the winds, mm, which is a bit of a danger. So you'd have to just wait, although you'd be, you, it wouldn't seem like waiting for you because you'd be uh, non-conscious, but at some point in the future, you would perhaps, by some science or magic method, you would recoalesce into the order in which you, you were before, and then you'd look around you thinking, oh, okay, how long was I gas for, and what's happened, and did they, did they, uh, they have they been in? I, I don't know. I don't know what happened there. So that's a, a really low-power form of invisibility, isn't it? You go invisible, but you can do, see, hear, think nothing until it wears off, and then you just have to hope that you, you escape the enemy. Where are my clothes? Oh, they took my clothes. Anyway, you can see there's lots, lots of drawbacks, but that's, that's a very, so it's a very powerful spell in some ways, but also not terribly useful. And I can think of more uh, drawbacks. So maybe you disperse into uh, more gas than, than, than fills the room and you flow through the doorway into the next room. And then if someone's looking for you, someone else says, well, a bit of a draft in here, isn't there? And they close the door, ka -chunk. And then uh, later when uh, you do magically coalesce again, you ooh, yeah, that could, that could be really bad. And when they were in the room looking for you, they, they were breathing you, weren't they? Actually, uh, so a bit of you went into the lungs, got changed chemically, only slightly, but a bit, and then they breathed just a little bit out. So when you do recoalesce somehow in the right order, I don't know how it's done, science or magic, uh, then, uh, yeah, you're going to be slightly changed because they, they were breathing you. Mm. Okay, so one to think about there. Maybe invisibility is sort of actually a potion of, of gaseous form, just by another name. Or, all right, maybe that's not how it works. Maybe it doesn't make you transparent. Maybe, uh, it, maybe it's just perfect camouflage. That's what it is. Yeah, invisibility just camouflages you absolutely perfectly. So someone looking at you just can't see you at all because you merge with your background perfectly. And a, a lot of um, uh, science speculation has worked on this, and people have talked about making visibility, vi visibility cloaks and shields and so forth. So you have a screen that covers you, which uh, has on it a picture of the world behind you. And so when viewed from exactly the right angle, 
uh, each uh, bit of the, the cloak or whatever it is uh, has a pixel which matches what you would see behind you, which is picked up by a camera, presumably on your back or something, and that's why they can't see you at all from that exact angle. But anyone else at any other angle, for instance, if you're trying to camouflage me against these bookshelves here, so uh, as you look at me, this pixel has to match that book there, but someone over there, this pixel will have to match that book over there. So they would see quite definitely a humanoid shape. I might look a bit weird, a, a distortion of the books, but it would be a, a human-sized, human-shaped distortion. And as soon as I moved, it would be obviously, yeah, that, that's Lloyd, that's him there. He's just wearing an invisibility cloak. He's fooling no one. Um, so that's a bit of a limitation. And shadows is another big one. So, for instance, if the sun is there beating down and I, I walk across the open plain, I'm going to be casting a shadow, even if the cloak makes me match the, 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 the horizon and the sand and the dunes and everything else brilliantly, I'm still going to be casting a shadow. And I cast shadow internally as well. So my nose casts a shadow onto my face. The, the deepness of the socket of my, of my, uh, my eye um, casts a little shadow on the top of my eyelid and so forth. So those shadows would have to match and again, they could only match perfectly as observed from one particular direction. And so anyone looking at me from any other uh, angle, as soon as I moved with that tiny bit of information, remember Predator, they would be able to make sense. Oh, yep, there's an invisible guy there. I can see all the shadows on his body and they all match the way a human moves. Yeah. So perfect camouflage only really works if either the viewer is in, uh, viewing you from just the right angle or perhaps you stay perfectly still. And even then it wouldn't be perfect if someone actually got really close to you and walked all the way around you, that it, 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 you'd still be given away. But you could be, if you were in a forest or something and you stayed still, yes, you could have an invisibility spell or cloak or whatever that made you, as long as you stayed still, perfectly invisible um, or near perfectly invisible. So again, a bit of a down powering of the, of the power. You can't actually, you know, move. Um, or maybe, right. You know how uh, in, the, in the fantasy film um, there's a vampire, and how do we know he's a vampire? Because you have a mirror, and you look at him in the mirror, and oh, I can't see him in the mirror because he's a vampire! Dun, dun, dun. Okay, well, and one of the, the, the early D&D, um, uh, &D, I know that one of the standard adventuring kit items was a silver mirror for looking for vampires, of course. It's not for, you know, checking your makeup. So, um, maybe... Um, right, the reason that someone can't see you is that uh, this suit you're wearing, this high-tech suit, when uh, a photon hits it and bounces off, it gets shifted out of phase. I don't know what that means. I just made that up. Shifted out of phase. It sounded fairly sciencey. It gets shifted out of phase, and then when it uh, goes into the uh, eye of an observer, it hits the retina. Because it's out of phase with the retina, the retina doesn't uh, respond to it, and so you are invisible. Okay, yeah, that could work, but what if... Um, it hits a mirror and bounces off, that act of reflection off certain surfaces uh, could mean that it gets shifted back into phase again, and so you are visible. So you'd be like a reverse vampire. So people could then walk around with mirrors looking for invisible people because they can be seen in mirrors. And whilst they're doing that, of course, they look very silly and uh, they operate uh, at, at very low efficiencies because they're all stumbling about looking into mirrors uh, to invisible men who might not actually be there. That's just the threat of an invisible man could make an awful lot of people so paranoid you could disable an army. They are whole armies. They've got the guns. They're wandering around looking in the, in the mirrors. Yeah, I could see that. It could be, it could be quite a funny scene, actually. Uh, anyway. Uh, so there you go, there's, another, there's another, another possibility of downpowering and actually at the same time also uppowering invisibility and using a bit of pseudoscience to do it. Um, now, one of the problems that Griffin uh, faced uh, was that his invisibility was permanent. Just think how horrendous that would be. What if the effects of invisibility were permanent? What sort of life would you have? Could you, could you stand living the rest of your life um, invisible? I mean, who would trust you? I mean, how many people would really trust an invisible person? Um, uh, do you think anyone would marry you if they hadn't already? Um, making kids, how do you think that's likely to go? Um, yeah, I think that the life of someone who is permanently invisible could be quite miserable. Um, and, uh, you know, if uh, it could be absolutely career-ending for an actor, I would have thought. Uh, so, Permanent invisibility would be uh, something that people would be quite terrified of. And what if that's a risk? 
What if, for instance, um, maybe it's, it, it's, a, it's a chemical that you drink, okay? So the science boffins or the, 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 the druids have brewed up a potion or whatever, they've created this thing and you drink it, and yes, most people uh, can metabolize uh, the various chemicals in it at such and such a rate, but some people metabolize them much faster, and some people, they don't have the genes, their bodies just can't metabolize that chemical. Ooh. So most people, they drink the thing and they go invisible for eh, between 10 and 20 minutes. Uh, but some people, they metabolize it really fast. So they drink it and they go on the secret mission and in the space of a minute and a half or something, they're already starting to become visible again. Oh, and they didn't predict that. Well, they didn't know that their body metabolized that chemical particularly, fa particularly fast. Ooh. And what about the guy who doesn't have the gene that can metabolize it at all? So he drinks it. And three years later, he's still invisible and thoroughly miserable. He has no friends. He's lost his home. He's lost his job. He's invisible. Yeah. Maybe as each cell gets replaced, which can take years, maybe you've gradually you start to become visible over, over a very long time. Or maybe, yep, that's the rest of your life. You're invisible, mate. Sorry, that's your lot. Well, you took the risk. And in a fantasy world where they don't know about genetics and can't screen you, uh, you'd have no way of knowing until you took the potion whether you can metabolize all the chemicals in it or, or not. Uh, or uh, in a sci-fi world where they can screen you for the genes, how do you know that no one has bribed the guy who works the analysis machine? Huh? Huh? Yeah. Okay. Wheels within wheels. Um, and uh, there are also, I think, psychological problems with, well, one, not knowing when something's going to wear off. So you're on a mission, but you don't know exactly when it's going to wear off. Maybe in a, in a role play game, you, you roll a die every turn to see if your invisibility is still, still working. So you, you've got to get all the way in, you've got to get the thing, you've got to get all the way out without being seen. And when is it going to wear off? That could be really psychologically affecting. It could make you rush and make mistakes, or it could make you uh, tiptoe, tiptoe, tiptoe. I don't want to be, I want to, I want to stay near the shadows. So if I get, become visible at any time, I can just duck back into those shadows, or I'm okay, I'm hidden here. I don't want to go out. I don't want to go out. Oh, I'll just stay here, thanks. Uh, it could really muck up, uh, muck up your mind, this not knowing when it's going to wear off. Um, and could you imagine if you could see yourself, so you are invisible, no one else can see you, but you, when you look at yourself, you can see yourself. Well, great, so you're no, no longer clumsy now. You can reach over the ambassador's shoulder, seeing exactly where your arm is. Yep, I can reach it, got it, and you can make off with it. And uh, yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's much better. Oh, but wait a minute. You can see yourself. So has it worn off or hasn't it? Uh, I'm looking around, no one's paying me any attention. Is that because I'm not very interesting or because they can't see me. Has the potion worn off? I don't know because I can see myself. That would be very nerve wracking. You walk out into the street, even when you know you're invisible because you've only just taken the potion uh, and you look around you and you think they can also come on. I, they must be able to see me. I'm right here. They must be able to see me. How, how well would you trust your ability to behave rationally and, and get full value out of the invisibility when you don't trust it to be working because you can see yourself. Think I'm right here. And every time someone looks in your direction, they can see me, they can see me. Can they see me? I'm not always, no, he's looking at his friend. Is, what, what, uh, you'd be spending all your time worrying about that and hardly any time on the mission. So being able to see yourself might actually be worse than not being able to see yourself, which I described earlier as quite bad. So they're both really bad. And in a role play game, for example, uh, it's quite normal uh, to roll dice uh, to see if you've succeeded at some task that you might fail at. So for instance, if I, oh, no, I, I shoot at a target, so I get my bow and I go twang and I roll some dice and oh, even though I'm a quite good archer, yeah, I rolled really bad dice. It was possible for me to miss the target, so it seems I've missed the target. We all think, okay, fair enough. But what about you're walking down the street and you want to trust in this potion, you, you tell yourself, okay, I know, I know I'm invisible really. I know it looks as though I'm not, but I know I'm invisible. I know all these people who really look as though they can see me. I know they can't see me, so I, I can do this. I can do this. How much would you trust yourself? You might try to tell yourself, no, no, don't worry. I will have faith. Don't worry. Give me the potion. It'll work. But when it comes to it, will you freak out? Uh, maybe there should be a die roll to decide. Um, and what about your companions? They may be in a similar situation. So you have a little conference and you say, okay, right, I'll sneak ahead, I'll go off, I'll take the potion and I'll scout back and I'll come back and I'll report, okay, and then we'll decide what we're going to do then. Okay, right, so I drink the potion and off I go. My companions, meanwhile, 
And think of them for a moment. None of them is invisible, but uh, they don't know exactly when I'll be back. They don't know exactly whether my mission will succeed. Will, will I get seen despite my invisibility? Um, it's been gone rather a long time, hasn't he? Uh, is he back? Has he come back? Has he come back, but he's, he can't speak for some reason? Has the spell struck him dumb? Because I've heard that's one of the side effects. Or, or maybe, they've, maybe they've found him. Maybe they've found him. Maybe they've, cap they've captured him. Maybe they're torturing him even now, and we're just standing here doing nothing. What? Is, is that him over there? There's, I thought I saw something in, in the shadows. Do you see? What? Um, Brian! Brian! Are you there? And then like, goodness sake, why the hell did you give me away? If you just hadn't, if you just kept your mouth shut. Oh yeah, Brian, Brian, are you there? Is that you? Oh yeah, brilliant. Then they, they all heard you and they, and then they all, I had to run. I just got away by the skin of my tooth, you idiot. So maybe, maybe um, the drama isn't with the guy using the invisibility. Maybe the, the, the writer of the story or, or the director of, the, of the, the film should actually stay with the people who are not invisible wondering about, maybe that's where the drama is, uh, they're wondering about the, the guy wandering invisibly. Um, so maybe, yeah, maybe a die roll to decide on, on, on whether they can resist the temptation to say, Brian, are you there? Um, and uh, <laughs> bumping, yeah, bumping into. Uh, one thing that humans are really good at, I mean really amazingly good at, is not bumping into each other. So there you go, uh, you're walking through uh, the centre of a city on a busy shopping Saturday before Christmas. How often have you seen two people just walk, bam, straight into each other? It doesn't happen, does it? Um, people are really good at using their peripheral vision and predicting how other people are likely to move, knowing that they can you know, see, because they have eyes and so forth, and so we don't bump into each other. Even people walking along, modern people with their telephones, heads down, as so many people are these days, very, very rarely do they walk smack into each other. Even just bumping shoulders slightly is, oh, so, sorry, I'm so sorry, I don't, I don't know how that happened. <clears throat> it is unusual enough for people to be really quite surprised by it. So if you are trying to walk through a crowded place and you are invisible, then, um, no one's going to see you. They're going to move quite unpredictably. Um, and that might be particularly weird if you can see yourself. So there's a guy walking this way. Oh, he'll just walk straight past me. It'll be fine. But then he realizes, oh, no, wait a minute. I need to go to that shop there. So he turns and goes straight into you in a way that you just couldn't predict. But hang on, but I, oh, no, he can't see me, can he? So moving through a crowd of people would actually be very difficult. And you'd, you'd have to really sort of have to give people a really wide berth. Um, and if the spell did wear, wear off and the people saw you going, walking in this strange way, um, a bit wide-eyed and wary of everyone around you and giving everyone a really wide berth, they might think to themselves, I live in a world in which invisibility is a thing. I think that guy over there, is, um, he thinks he's invisible. Hmm, he must be up to something. Arrest that man! You can see how this could go really wrong. Well, um, uh, another way. Let's, let's go with another way. There's another way that you could go invisible, and that is you slip into a parallel dimension. This could be science, this could be fantasy, it wo both works. And I did that because I was thinking of Frodo putting on the ring. So those of you who've seen the Lord of the Rings films and or, or read the book will know that it's sort of like slipping into a parallel dimension, isn't it? In the, in the Hobbit, he just puts it on, bing, he's invisible, that's all there is to it. But in the Lord of the Rings, we find out that there's a lot more to this ring. And when he puts it on, Frodo slips into the world of Sauron and uh, the ring wraiths, inconveniently, uh, can all see him perfectly well. In fact, if anything, their attention is drawn to him when he's wearing the ring. Also, Tom Bombadil can, can, can see Frodo, but uh, nothing ever comes of this. Uh, he just goes, oh, oh, I'm Tom Bombadil, I'm irrelevant, and uh, carries on. But anyway, um, and uh, one thing I like about uh, the way it's depicted in the film is that his ability to navigate in the, the normal world, as the rest of the characters, the rest of the, uh, the fellowship uh, perceive it, is, is hampered by the fact that in the parallel dimension, his view of the normal, if you like, mundane plane is actually r really vague. It's sort of black and white, and, and there are these weird, grey, windy shapes flying about, and it's quite difficult for him to, to navigate, and he stumbles. And maybe in the parallel dimension, things are, di are different. So it could be, for instance, you want to go down the corridor and through that door. So you go, OK, right, I'll put on my invisibility cummerbund, and uh, you slip into a parallel dimension, but in the parallel dimension, they've bricked up that door. Ah. Oh. 
Yeah. Oh, and the ring roads are after you. So the parallel dimension uh, approach is one way you can, you can cope with invisibility and downpower it as much as you like and make it interesting and, and dramatic and not too world-breaking uh, if handled carefully. Um, now, uh, in my, uh, well, I would say possibly my favorite, um, one of my favorite role-play games is RuneQuest, and in that they have an invisibility spell, but it doesn't make you transparent, it doesn't send you into a parallel dimension, it doesn't give you a refractive index of air, it doesn't turn you into gas, uh, it doesn't do any of those things. Instead, it sort of generates a somebody else's problem field. It distracts people from you. You cast it onto yourself, and people, yeah, you're there, you're visible, you're there, you're, you're, you're solid, you're, you're there, but no one pays you any attention. You're invisible in that sense. Uh, if you rush over to someone and shake him by the shoulder and shout in his face, oh yeah, he'll notice you, oh yeah, what, what is it? Because you can be seen, you're not transparent, it's just that they, the, the, you were out of mind. Um, so it's a sort of distraction spell, uh, and I quite like that, although you could take it a lot further, I think. So perhaps uh, a referee might say, okay, uh, but I want to know what are you distracting people towards? You have to pick a thing. So uh, the guards are in the room and you want to get the thing out of the chest and so you cast it on, um, um, boom, that stone in the wall. And they all go, ooh, look at that stone in the wall. I've never noticed how remarkable that stone in the wall is. And whilst they're all transfixed by the stone in the wall, you can, you can search the chest over there and the chest over there. Uh, the trouble is though that you didn't pick a very interesting thing, did you? All right, you know, maybe you were in a hurry, and after a while, the guys might think, "Why are we all fascinated? Why are we all looking at this stone in the?" Actually, it's just like the stone. What am I? It's just like the stone above it and the stone below. And wait a minute, someone's cast invisibility on us. We're all distracted by it. There's an invisible, invisible man in the room. Quick, everyone! Swords, flower, hose pipes, um, and so you could be undone. So you could perhaps pick something enormously more interesting to cast it on. And so there, okay, I feel, oh, there's a genuinely interesting thing there. Oh, okay, oh, look at the interesting thing. And you check the, the chest over there, it's not in it. And they go, oh, it, it's such an interesting thing. Oh, look how interesting it is. You check the chest over there, it's not in that one either. Uh, yeah, and then you notice, oh, there's a, ch oh, there's a chest in that corner. But you're gonna have to, oh, you're gonna have to walk between them and the thing you've distracted them towards. So that as soon as you do that, they go, oh, look, there's a guy there. And they go, how did he get in? Or maybe, maybe that wouldn't happen. Maybe uh, you'd walk right in front of their vision and they'd go, yeah, yeah, just, oh, there's a guy in, and, ah, oh, this is a really interesting thing. And you pick up the chest and you walk back with it. And yeah, yeah, it, it, it's kind of in the way again. And it's only later they go, the chest is missing. Why were we all watching? Do you remember there was a guy who walked in and none of us, oh, you see, and so again, you could be undone, but maybe you're miles away by the time they realize, and so that's dramatic too. Um, I quite like the idea of this, that there's a distraction idea. Also, you could say it's not a distraction spell at all, it's an attraction spell. What you've done is you've made them attracted to the thing that you've got them all to focus on whilst you go about doing your business. So maybe you could use exactly the same spell uh, to, for instance, if you're setting up your Punch and Judy stall in the market square and you want to attract an audience, you cast it onto your puppet and then um, all the pastors passers by in the town go, whoa, wow, look, there's a Punch and Judy show. I don't even like Punch and Judy and yet I'm strangely transfixed by this one. Um, so maybe there you go, politicians making speeches or something. So attract it, or, or distress call, yeah. help, help, over here, mm, cast invisibility or distraction or attraction or whatever you want to, to, to call it now on yourself. And now, yeah, people will pick you up. Um, okay, it's a bit of a multi-purpose spell then. So yeah, distraction is one way of doing it. And then that seems so much more feasible and so much more, um, much more dramatically, um, uh, far more dramatic possibilities there because there are so many things that can go wrong or right by picking the right distraction at the right time. Um, uh, but of course, if someone is suspicious that there's someone in the room, then they start looking for you and then they're very likely to, to find it. And if you're right in front of them and you realize, uh-oh, they've realized who I am. The guards at the town gate, they've realized who I am. I need to disappear. You cast invisibility on yourself. Well, if it's the transparency type invisibility or the, 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 the one ring to rule them all uh, parallel dimension type, then you will ping, disappear in front of their eyes. And, Where did it go? Where did it go? They won't be able to find you because you are gone. But if it's the distraction type, uh, they're talking to you and then you, you, you just go, oh, look at that, that barrel over there. And they go, well, what's a barrel? Uh, what's it? Oh, he's gone. What? Oh no, there he is. Because they were just talking to you. They knew that you were there. 
and you distracted them for a, a short while. Yes, you managed to run a few yards, but then you, you didn't actually turn yourself transparent or, you know, or, or dissipa disappearing into the thin air. You're just there. So uh, quick, after him. Um, not me, because of my leg, but you, after him. And so you can see that, that that's another drawback. You, you can't disappear if someone's already seen you. So you'd have to plan, oh, I need to get past the guards. I'll cast it in advance when I'm round the corner out of their sight, and then I walk with the spell running into their sight, and hopefully they won't notice as I just walk past. They go, Ooh, doo -doo -doo -doo. that guy's irrelevant, and oh, look, a barrel. Um, so that could work. Um, another uh, possible uh, advantage or disadvantage of that is you could cast it on yourself in front of all your mates. You could say, right, guys, guys, I'm going to go invisible, okay? People won't be able to see me because they'll all be distracted from me, but I'm right here, okay? So all of you look at me right now. Here we go, Alakazam. And those guys, all your companions, they're looking at you. Okay, yeah, 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 there he is, there he is. And they can follow you as you go off and do the thing, and they will be able to see you, but other people will be distracted. Of course, if they take your, yeah, I know. If they take, oh, if they take their eyes off you for one second, then uh, they might lose you too. Or maybe you don't go completely invisible, and it's just a little, little wisp, little telltale. Oh yeah, you can still see his fingernails or whatever it is. I never would have noticed. Never would have noticed that. If okay, right, I'll just keep keep watching those. And then they could they could they could shoot in support of your violent actions without fear of hitting you. Um, all going well. Uh, so other people's being able to see you would be quite an advantage for that sort of invis invisibility. Um, now. One uh, other uh, approach to this is you say, oh, no, no, we've come, up, we've come up the whole power the wrong way around. It's not that the person goes invisible, it's that the observer fails to observe them. So actually what you're doing is you're zapping with science or magic or whatever, the observer and not the potentially observed. And that downpowers invisibility really quite a lot. So there are three guards you have to get past, okay? Zap! He can't see me, but the other two can, and maybe they'll point me out to the third, who can't see me at the moment. Uh, okay, so I've now got to zap three guys, which takes three times as many resources of zap, um, and if perhaps uh, these zaps are not 100% successful, because maybe they are non-compliant, and maybe I'll fail to overcome their, their science-y resistance, or their, their willpower resistance, or whatever it is, however they resist these spells, these effects, and, um, I, okay, I zapped all three, two of them can't see me, but one of them still can, so I'll just have to wait for him to go, go to the loo, and then I do the thing, assuming that it hasn't worn off, and you can never really tell exactly when it's worn off. This is quite nice nerve-wracking using invisibility. Um, all right, so I, I've talked about um, ways of downpowering it and ways of explaining how it works in the first place. I, I think possibly I ought to talk about some of the ways of up-powering it, some of the, the, the upsides of, of it. Um, one uh, being that um, I don't, th unless you make invisibility really, really common, it's always going to be way down the list of explanations people will come up with in their minds for why they've observed for whatever it is they've just observed. For instance, there is a door just there. You can't see it, but trust me, there is. And uh, if that door were to just open now, but I see no one, I would think, well, hmm, gust of wind. I would think, oh, um, the, the, the latch has come undone and there's a spring on it. Or I would think uh, some, well, some friend of mine has come into the house and they've pushed it, they're having a laugh. Or uh, Invisible Man did it would be way, way down the list. I, I won't say completely off the list because I'm mean, bothering to have this conversation. And I started off, if you remember, saying that it was just conceivably possible to create an invisible man. Um, but I will think of a million other explanations before that. And frankly, I'm, I'm pretty much likely to rule it out as an explanation. So even when people do observe whatever it is, and it can be something quite extreme of an invisible man, then they're probably going to come up with some other explanation in their mind. Nah, can't be that. Must be something else. So that would uh, go a long way to keeping you, keeping you safe, I would have thought, from uh, uh, people concluding, it's an invisible man! Get him! Or, I suppose, it's an invisible man! Hey, well done, he's very invisible. That's another possible re um, uh, reaction. It's not always get him, but it will often be because of the stories that people, you know what I mean. Right. Um, another thing is that uh, I think people would regard it as, as technology. And as soon as you regard it as technology, then you can start talking about it, not in terms of you're invisible or you're not invisible, but of all the pros and cons. Ah, yeah, well, at this magic school, 
Uh, we all, traditionally, we used to uh, teach Gandalfian uh, invisibility and, and other magics, and that was reliable for, for, for centuries, but actually Malkorian magic is now the thing which everyone's really into. Gandalfian, it's good, it's good. Uh, it's reasonably easy to learn, it's reasonably reliable, but people always hated the fuzzy vision it gave you when you, when you were uh, invisible, and uh, you can never really tell when it was going to wear off, and it would sort of wear off gradually rather than all at once, which uh, a lot of users didn't like. Uh, but whereas the Malkorian stuff, uh, it, it, it wears off, like, you, you just become visible in a blink, and you know when you've become visible, and which, so, so that's a very useful thing to know. Um, and there's still uh, drawbacks though, it's a fair bit harder to, to learn, it's more expensive. Uh, and um, a lot of users have been complaining of really bad headaches, uh, but that's not all of them. So if I were you, I'd wait for the, the, the Malkorian uh, 2.5, which they keep saying is going to come out soon, uh, to appear. But on the other hand, if you just need to be uh, fairly unlikely to be noticed whilst uh, sta standing still under uh, pretty favorable lighting conditions, then there are really much cheaper alternatives available. Uh, you know, so that's, that's one way of coming at um, uh, coming at invisibility uh, like modern technology. And so there are pros and cons of all the various ways of going invisible and um, uh, you could pick with some knowledge from, from them, tailor the invisibility you want to your task. Why not? And, and your budget. Uh, another thing though is that I think if there were uh, invisibility in a world that rather than being used on people, which might have all sorts of nasty side effects, e.g. the cancer I mentioned earlier, it might be that it's used mainly on things, not on people. So you're going to the conference, you're not allowed to take weapons of course, but you're really frightened that someone's going to uh, try to assassinate you or your friend, so it'd be really handy to be able to go with a weapon. Well, cast invisibility on the weapon and you are armed, uh, though apparently unarmed, at a conference. Um, oh, they've captured you. Yeah, you've got the keys to the cell, but they're invisible. But they don't know that. Uh, or you're trying to steal something. Oh, right. Well, in that case, give yourself a really good alibi. Um, just wear a pair of swimming trunks and uh, uh, some sunglasses and just um, brazenly walk past everyone. Make sure everyone sees you in your sunglasses and swimming trunks. And then make sure again on the way out as you're carrying the thing uh, that uh, everyone can see that quite definitely there's no way have you stolen the thing because you know you just there's no way where would he hide it he was just no 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 officer I saw him trimming trunks and a smile oh yeah and, and sunglasses that was it that was all he was wearing so it definitely definitely wasn't him who stole the thing um, although I can imagine that there would be uh, drawbacks uh, again to making objects uh, invisible. So, for instance, you've got your invisible sword, and uh, you go battle, 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 and oh, one of your one of your friends has gone wounded. Oh, so you, you, you go over to him and ah, quickly you know, do the pump on the chest, do that medical kit, and you get him up, and drag him up. Quick, yes, can you can you take him away? Take him away, great, great. And where's my sword? What? what oh, hang on. Oh, remember that clanging noise? Yes, yeah, someone kicked it. That must have been what the. Oh. Some, in all the, oh, okay, right, now everyone, watch where you're treading. Oh dear, so yeah, that, that, there are drawbacks as well of having, can you imagine how awful it would be uh, waking up in the morning and, and exclaiming, oh no, someone's stolen my invisible sword. I think, 